Hello friends, welcome to my channel. Today's topic is a continuation of how to review welder qualification as per ASME section 9. In this lesson, we are going through mechanical testing for performance qualification, which is given in QW302.1 of ASME section 9. The one and only mechanical testing method used to qualify welder is by using bent test. Bent test can be either face and root bend or side bends. The figure shows different types of bent testing. In face bending, face of the specimen will be in tension and in root bending, root of the specimen will be in tension. As the name indicates, in side bending, one of the sides of the specimen will be in tension. Next topic is how many bent specimens and what kind of bent testing need to be performed for a particular thickness of world metal. We have to go to table QW452.1A which will give the relationship among the thickness of weld metal, types of bend testing, and number of test coupons required for positions such as 1G, 2G, 3G, 4G in plates and 1G, 2G in pipes. If the thickness of weld metal is less than 10 mm, then the required bend testing method is the face and root bend and the number of test coupons required is 1 each. The number of the test specimen required is one each. If the thickness of weld metal is 10 millimeter to less than 19 millimeter, then we can adopt either side bend or face bend. And the number of test coupon remains unchanged, that is one each. That is, if we are using face and root bend combination, then one face and one root bend. If we are using side bend, then we have to perform two side bends to qualify the welder. If the thickness of weld metal is 19 mm and over, then we can only use side bends for qualification because there is no inner space between the former and the die to perform face and root bend. One of the limitations of face and root bend specimen is that, root bend testing is that, it is only applicable to weld made by one welder with one or two processors or two welder with one process each. The reason why is that the weld made by each welder or processor shall be present in the convex surface of the test specimen. Next is how can we find out the dimension of test coupon for both plate and pipe in order to qualify the welder. Please understand the coupon refers to the entire plate or pipe on which the welder welds, whereas the specimen is the cutout piece of the coupon to perform a particular test, in our case bent test. The location of the bent specimen for plate coupon is given in, in figure QW463.2A. This is the figure QW463.2A. Unlike AWS, ASME doesn't specify the dimension of the test coupon for performance qualification. ASME only specified that the dimension of test coupon shall be sufficient to provide the required test specimen, which is given in QW211. So how can we calculate the minimum dimension of the test coupon? In order to calculate the minimum dimension of the test coupon, we have to calculate the following two dimensions. The first one is the minimum length of the test coupon and the second one is the minimum width of the test coupon. Minimum required length of the test coupon is the sum of width of bent specimen, that is face and root bend or side bends, and the width of the discarded area. Let me take the width of the discarded area as 25 mm minimum on both sides from where we get the dimension of the face and root bend specimen. In order to obtain the details of face and root bend specimen, we have to go to figure QW462.3A. This is the figure of QW462.3A. These are the dimension of face and root, root bend specimen. This is a dimension of the face bend specimen. This is the dimension of the root bend specimen. And both of them are identical in dimensions. From the figure, it is clear that the width of the bend specimen is 38 millimeter and the length of the bend specimen is 6 inch or 150 millimeter or as required. And there is a 3 millimeter chamfer is provided on it just to prevent the corner cracking, premature corner cracking of the specimen. If the thickness from this table it is clear that if the thickness of the weld metal is in between 1.5 and less than 3 mm, then the thickness of the specimen is equal to the thickness of weld metal. 
and if the thickness of the well metal is in between 3 to 10 mm then the thickness of the specimen equal to the thickness of weld metal except p number 23 and p number 35 if it is greater than 10 mm then the thickness of bent specimen is 10 mm except p number 23 and 35 so the total length of the test coupon will be the sum of the width of bent specimens and discarded area that is 25 plus 38 plus 38 plus 25 25 plus 38 plus 38 plus 25 we will get 136 millimeter generally we will take the length as 150 millimeter for our convenience and generally we will add one or two more space for additional bent specimen to compensate the premature failure of the bent specimen outside heat affected zone and weld metal so the dimension of the bent specimen will be 150 millimeter length and 150 millimeter width next is the location of the bent specimen in the pipe coupon in order to get the location of the bent specimen, we have to go to figure QW463.2D. This figure gives the location of the side and face bent specimen for the positions 5G and 6G. From the figure, it is clear that unlike 1G and 2G position, 5G and 6G requires four bent specimens, that is, two face and two root bends or four side bends. So, how to remove bent specimen for 1G and 2G position? In order to do, we have to omit the specimen in the upper right and the lower left quadrants and replacing the root bent specimen in the upper left quadrants with face bend. So, the location of the bent specimen look like this. For 1G and 2G position. Once a specimen cut out from the coupon, then we bend it, then how can we evaluate whether the welder pass or not by looking into the bended specimen? The acceptance criteria for bent specimens are given in QW 163 that state that no open discontinuity in the weld or heat affected zone exceeding 3 mm measured in any direction of the convex surface of the specimen after bending and open discontinuities occurring in the corner on the or on the corner of the specimen during testing shall not be considered unless there is definite evidence that they result from lack of fusion, slagging fusion, etc. The bended coupon look like this and the surface on which it has a convexity is called convex surface. The discontinuity is greater than 3 mm on this surface is considered as relevant which results in the rejection of entire test coupon and the welder has to requalify. Any discontinuity found in the corner of the specimen is considered as non-relevant unless there is definite evidence that will result from lack of fusion or slag inclusion, etc. For next class, uh, performance, I will go through performance qualification by volumetric NDE. Hope this lesson is clear to you all guys. If you have any doubts, please comment in the comment section. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe the channel for more videos. Thank you.